people are trying to buy your crypto cheap. You'll be sitting pretty in your positions when all of a sudden the FUD hits and your coin starts to plummet. Things are finally looking green again, but if you're someone who let the FUD get to you, then you might have missed out on a ton of upside potential or lost a lot of money by selling at a loss when things weren't going well. We've seen it time and time again with some major coins. I have positions in these coins myself and some of them are still pretty cheap compared to what we can expect to see in the bull run. Luckily, fear, uncertainty, and doubt couldn't shake me out. But in this video, I want to discuss these coins, address the FUD, and share my strategies to navigate the upcoming highs and lows. If you want to make it this bull run, you don't want to miss this video. Welcome back to another episode of Fire Hustle. My name is Summer. I just launched the Fire Hustle VIP Discord for those who want early access to private token sales for new projects. You'll also get to see my personal portfolio moves, access exclusive giveaways, and much more. Check out the link in the description to learn more. Before we get started, don't forget to like, subscribe, and most importantly, hit that shiny bell notification button. And as always, please remember that none of this is financial advice. So let's start with Caspa. There was so much FUD with Caspa over the last few months. Not only FUD regarding issues with Casplex or Caspa technology, but unreasonable FUD linked to the nationality of the team. And we also saw some FUD about the price itself. We even had Forbes calling Caspa a zombie blockchain at one point in time. And a lot of people probably sold out of their positions, but I say this time and time again, you need to look at the fundamentals. So if you understand what you've purchased and truly believe in the project, then you should stand by your decision. That goes with any investment you get into. And of course, only invest what you're willing to lose. Now, looking at the Caspa price chart, we saw a lot of this FUD about two months ago when Caspa was in the 11 to 12 cent range. And where are we now with Caspa? Well, it's sitting pretty at over 18 cents. This is probably one of the best charts you'll lay your eyes on in this crypto space. There's a pattern of climbs and pullbacks, but every little while, the price has overall been pushing higher and higher. Of course, with any chart, we do see pullbacks. It's normal and it's healthy. But I'm bullish on Caspa and have been holding onto my position and actually dollar cost averaging further into it. So here's why. First of all, we all know that Caspa still isn't on major exchanges. Reaching the top 30 cryptos by market cap without these big exchanges is insane, not to mention they're constantly building and the ecosystem just began its expansion with a native token standard and layer two operations coming soon. As always, I come back to the fundamentals though. So Caspa is designed to be fast, scalable, and is a layer one proof of work network that uses something called BlockDeg. BlockDeg is a structure that improves upon traditional blockchain design and operations operates through a web-like network, resulting in faster block times and higher transaction speeds. So I have a full video on Caspa and its fundamentals and how it solves the blockchain trilemma of security, scalability, and decentralization. And if you're interested in that video, then you can check it out here. All right, so that's Caspa, but now there is another coin that has faced a ton of FUD and has had a pretty rough time. But before I tell you about this coin, I wanna quickly talk about a game changer for my crypto trading and YouTube setup. The E7 plus standing desk from FlexiSpot. So for those of us immersed in the fast paced world of crypto, having a stable and adaptable workspace is non-negotiable. The standout feature is stability. So imagine adjusting your desk with a single ripple in your coffee cup, a massive contrast to other desks that tremble with every move. This level of steadiness is crucial for my detailed analysis and filming of content without disruptions. Compatibility is key with the E7 Plus, accommodating a wide range of desktop sizes to fit all my gear seamlessly. Plus, the advanced keypad with programmable heights and USB port enhances my workflow, allowing for easy transitions between standing and sitting without missing a beat in the volatile crypto market. What truly adapts to the life of a crypto trader and content creator is the desk three stage legs, offering a wide height range and eliminating wobble, ensuring a stable and versatile workspace for users of all heights. So upgrading to the E7 Plus has revolutionized my workspace, promoting health and efficiency in my daily crypto ventures and content creation. For those in the crypto space looking for an ergonomic boost to your workspace, the E7 Plus by FlexiSpot is an investment that pays dividends in productivity and well-being. So if you're as serious about your setup as you are about your crypto investments, the E7 Plus by FlexiSpot is your next best move. Check out the link in the description to see for yourself. Now back to the video. So the second coin I wanna talk about today is called Cubic. It's been criticized for the personality of its founder and accounts on Twitter have been taking hits at Cubic for its tokenomics. Again, there's a lot of baseless tweets out there that you have to ignore and take a look 
look at the fundamentals. I first talked about Cubic in November of 2023. At that time, Cubic wasn't even listed on CoinMarketCap or CoinGecko. And after that, we saw it reach its all-time high in March of 2024. The crazy part is, is that it was able to reach a billion dollar market cap with relatively small exchanges. Again, no major exchanges. If we take a look at the one month time period, just recently, we saw a pretty big dip on July 15th, but look what happened right after. The dip was eaten up and we all saw a nice run up. But if we zoom out and look at the all time chart, we can see that Cubic has room for growth and is far from its all time high. Personally, I've been dollar cost averaging into this position and was lucky enough to capture the recent dip. But you're probably wondering, well, Summer, Cubic is pretty down from when you first talked about it, so why do you keep dollar cost averaging into it? Well, personally, I think Cubic can do pretty well going forward. Forward. So Cubic is a fair launched layer one network. It uses a unique consensus system known as useful proof of work. So unlike traditional proof of work networks where miners solve random math equations, Cubic miners contribute to training AI models, which is done through their native AI software called Agar. So Cubic basically creates practical use cases for miners and ways to efficiently use computational power. Now they recently released a blog post discussing Agar and they say that the goal with Agar is to replace the evolutionary process to develop AI that evolves, adapts, and improves over time. All of this requires a great amount of computing power, and it is quite ambitious. Now, they do recognize that there are many challenges, but with continuous growth and support from the community, the team thinks that it is possible for Agarth to lead many AI advancements. Now, the network operates through a set of 676 validators, each with their own pool of miners, similar to how mining pools work with Bitcoin and other proof of work networks. What's cool is that it's also designed to be a fee-less network which is a huge plus for users and cubic stands out because of its smart contracts which are launched through ipo each contract undergoes a proposal vote and if approved leads an ipo where users can purchase shares in the contract shareholders are then eligible to receive a portion of the passive income generated from contract fees the execution of smart contracts results in cubic coin burns which means this is a deflationary ecosystem it's a pretty unique concept that makes sure that only real and useful contracts are approved the project was founded by Come From Beyond, the co-founder of IOTA. Now, with AI being a major narrative in the upcoming bull run, Cubic's strong community and the fundamentals, I think that there is definitely room for growth. Now, while Caspa and Cubic did experience FUD, one project that really took a hit because of major FUD is ATOR, which has now been rebranded and goes by the name Anyone Protocol. So as part of the rebrand, the Anyone token was launched near the end of June to replace the original ATOR token. Now, there's not a lot of information here on the new price chart, but if you look at the original ATOR price chart, there was a huge climb to set an all-time high in April. And before this point, the ATOR project received a ton of FUD, especially on Twitter. This caused a ton of uncertainty among the community, but despite this huge price climb, there was still a lot of fear being spread about the future of ATOR and how good the project really is. And then it was downhill from there until the rebranding. So switching over to the new token price chart, it seems like the pullback continued and it reached a new low just over a dollar. And now the price is starting a new climb. So what exactly is the Anyone Protocol? And why does it have potential to explode in the bull run? Well, for starters, the Anyone Protocol is all about decentralized privacy and data control. It's a network that allows any app to run on a Web3 privacy network and is powered by nodes or relays that can be operated by anyone. So this fits right into the deep end sector. Any individual interested in contributing to the Anyone Protocol network can purchase and connect one of these relay devices to their internet. And that's all. The device contributes a portion of your internet's bandwidth and in return, you receive tokens as a reward. So the whole purpose of this project is to create privacy for users without having to depend on large corporations. Instead, a private network is created by the community of relay node operators. Now the network itself functions through something called onion routing. This is when data in a network passes through layers of encryption to make it completely anonymous. In the Anyone protocol, all of the relay devices connected to the internet form the Anon network. And online activity taking place on this network gets rerouted from device to device, making this traffic completely anonymous and decentralized. So this network actually lets you access the internet in a way that's more private than VPNs because VPN service providers still rely on centralized companies. Now, one thing worth mentioning 
mentioning is their partnership with Peak, which is a major deep-in ecosystem that houses over 750,000 devices across over 30 different projects. So with this partnership, Peak is looking to route their online traffic through the Anyone protocol to ensure both privacy and safety for users. This is critical because deep-ins are all about data collection and sharing. And I'm sure you're all familiar with how easy it is for large corporations to access your personal data and invade your privacy. So the Anyone protocol is being used to protect the deep-in community. Now, while this project hits both the privacy and deep-in narratives, there's also potential for this one to grow into a much bigger deal in the real world, especially if people start to understand that true privacy can be achieved through centralized services like VPNs. So these are three examples of crypto projects that face a ton of FUD but they continue to build and improve their ecosystem. And they've been preparing themselves for the big bull run push that everyone is anticipating. We're already seeing a bit of a run right now as the market turned around again, but I personally believe there's still a long way to go for each of these projects. But while you're sitting there plotting your next portfolio moves, don't forget to have a strategy in mind. So for example, I always use dollar cost averaging for all my altcoin positions. So making smaller purchases over time instead of throwing in large amounts all at once. That way, if the crypto market starts to pull back again, all of a sudden, then I still have funds to average down. And I would avoid going all in too high. And I always, always say this, but only invest what you're willing to lose. At the end of the day, crypto can be very volatile and unpredictable. And that's all, folks. If you're interested in learning more about my portfolio strategies, come join me in the Fire Hustle Discord. You can find the link in the description below. And if you want more videos like this, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Remember, the crypto space comes with a high risk and none of this is financial advice. I highly recommend that you do your own research before deciding to invest. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. See you in the next one.